Right, get your drinking boots on because today we're making beer. My friend John has invited me to his house and we're going to make a spectacular Christmas ale. We've also got Mike, who's a beer aficionado, who's come along to help us out as well. And of course, along the way, we're going to be drinking some cracking craft beers. So let's get into it. First thing we're going to do, we're going to grab what we call a cheesecloth. It looks like a sock, a pair of tights, whatever you want to use. We're going to fill that with specialty grains. And that sock goes into some warm water, which we're going to bring to a boil. Make sure that that's covered. We'll start to see the, the color and the flavor and the aroma start to release from those specialty grains. So the idea is to get all of the wonderful sugars from the grains, add the sugars from the rock salt, and that's what's going to create the food for the yeast to create a lot of really warm alcohol, and that's super important in a Belgian ale. We're gonna add some liquid malt, some powdered malt, and some rock candy sugar. You cannot have a Belgian ale without rock candy. So the reason why we're adding both dry malt and liquid malt extract in this beer is we wanna bring in not just the um, sugars to ferment, but the rich caramel malt flavors that really defines uh, a beautiful Christmas Belgian ale. Kettles come back up to a boil. We're approaching what we call the hot break, which is the most critical part of our entire beer making experience. So the reason the hot break is important is we want to get all the proteins out of the beer, clarify the beer for a nice, crisp, clear, clean taste. We want to turn the heat down as that foam rises up so as not to create a mess on the stove. And trust me, malt boiling over on a home stove is nothing you want to experience. Let's kill that right away. <laughs> we'll stop the boiling process, we'll let it to a, uh, a rolling boil, at which point we're going to add our hops. So we add the hops and they're super important because they, they balance the sweetness of the grains and provide just the right amount of bitterness. They also provide flavor and they provide aroma on the nose at the finish. Irish moss has been in there for about five minutes. The Irish moss is important because it just pulls all the unwanted stuff out of our beer so we get a nice clean beer at the end. It's now time to cool. We can turn that heat off completely and stick it on another burner and let that cool to room temperature. Or we can accelerate the cooling process with a copper coil by running cool water through it. Are we up for this? Barrel roll, Russian Imperial Stout, so brewed with maple syrup and bourbon barrels. 18.9% alcohol. <laughs> Folks, you're not going to find this very good, very many places. All right, today I'm supposed to have a baby daughter, but apparently she's now not going to come until Christmas Day. So, cheers to that. Cheers, cheers. cheers. All right, because we're making a Christmas sale, we're going to put some festive spices in there. A little bit of coriander, a little bit of orange peel, and we're going to let that sit as it cools down. So the quicker you cool your beer, the better chance you have of no germs or unwanted bacteria ruining your beer. All we've got to do now is take our beer, put it in a glass carboy, add some yeast and let it ferment for about two weeks. So what the yeast does for it is very importantly, it takes all of those wonderful sugars and converts them into alcohol and carbon dioxide and provides a lot of flavor as well, especially for Belgian yeast. 